This video tutorial will give you an overview of Activity 2 in the MacPy Labs and the classes you'll be going over. These sets of activities will be covering more topics than you've covered to date, like creating more than one class and calling their functions. It's a good practice to separate uh, different processes out to different classes, but we'll be covering those in later chapters. For now, the goal is for you to learn more about string functions and how to take the code and build off of it. In the Magpie Labs, each activity will have a runner class and a worker class. So let's go over to that. Magpie Runner 2 will start the main process, and Magpie 2 will have the logic. So this runner class is your runner class. It's your primary function. You've seen this before public, static, void, main. It's the default function that's called when you run a, a, a Java application and magpy2 will have is the workhorse it's the actual worker of the pro of the of the program you can see that we create a magpy2 class here and we call magpy2 get greeting and magpy get response so i'm going to walk you through this and just kind of give you an overview of how magpy runner works so you can see right here i put a breakpoint uh, at two points here in the code so we can step through. All right, we're starting here. I create a new magpy2 class and I get the greeting and output the greeting. Hello, let's talk. You can see that that printed out. Hello, let's talk. I create a scanner class and now I'm going to scan in my first statement, read in my first statement from the user. And this one I'm just going to say, hello there. All right, I input that and I step to the next line in the program. All right. Now I scan the statement. Statement now holds what I've just typed in, which is hello there. You can see that over here. It does not equal by, so we're starting. We're entering the while loop. Here I get the response for hello there, and I pass in hello there into the function get response, and it comes back with hmm. All right, and we print that out. Now it's going to prompt me for another line. It's going to continue continue to keep asking me until that matches by. Until whatever I enter in matches by. So let's do that. I'm going to end the, the program by. I enter that in. It enters the, it goes back to the top of the while loop, evaluates it, and ends the program. Skips out of the while loop and ends the program. So that's really all that the Magpie Runner classes do. As you can see, this is Magpie Runner 2, and it corresponds with Activity 2. So there are five activities. You'll see Magpie Runner 2, Magpie 2, Magpie Runner 3, Magpie Runner 4, Magpie Runner 5. And every time you go to a new activity, there'll be a new class uh, that you will need to override. All you Really, all you don't have you don't have to worry about this other than it just does a basic type of print of of processing. The real workhorse is in the get greeting and the get response. So, in order to get to that, we're going to set breakpoints in the Magpie two class so we can get into the meat of the program of what's actually happening underneath the hood. So here's that class Magpie two. We're going to set a breakpoint at at the first line of every function so you can kind of see what it's doing. All right. So there are three functions in Magpie 2 is get greeting, get response, and get random response. So, let's step through and see what happens. All right. We create the class. Now we're going to call get greeting and get greeting is going to return something to us and we're going to print that out. So let's see what that that is. Here, you can see that get greeting, all it does is return a string. It's fairly simple. Hello, let's talk. It returns that function string back to Magpie Runner 2. And now Magpie Runner is going to print that out. So we should expect here, hello, let's talk. All right. We're going to create a scanner and scan in the next line. I'm going to say this time, my mother likes blue and enter that in and we're going to step through that. This doesn't, my mother likes blue does not equal by so we'll go to inside the, the while loop and now we're going to print out Maggie's get response. So when I go to the next line, 
we'll jump back over to Magpie 2. And sure enough, here we are at the top of get response. So as you see, we paste, we've we passed in the statement, which is my mother likes blue. And this function is essentially just one big if, if else if statement. We're going to search the string and find instances of keywords. We're going to be using a new function you haven't been heard haven't heard of, a new string function called index of. So if you think of a string as a set of characters, they each have a position. Like this is position zero like for this y so negative that w is position zero, h is position one, <coughs> y is position two, and so on. So what this if statement is doing is saying look for the word no in this string that you passed in. So let's step through. The word no is not in that string, so we should ex expect it to skip to the ne next elf else of statement. Here it's going to look for <clears throat> mother, father, sister, and brother. And sure enough, we have the word mother in that string. So we expect this else of statement to, re to return inside these curly braces. And sure enough, it's setting the string response to tell me more about your family. Now, since we've entered this else if statement, we expect it to skip out and go to the end of the else if statement, which is returning the string back response, which is tell me more about your family. That returns back to the main program, Magpie Render 2, and it prints it out. Tell me more about your family. Okay. Now we're going to input in another string. So let's just put in junk and see what happens with that. So it'll go back to the top of the loop, look for another get response, and we're going to trace through this again. Here we are at the top of get response. So is the word no in that string? Nope. It'll skip out to the next one. Is mother, father, sister, and brother in that string? Nope. It goes down to the final statement else. So this, this is a catch-all statement. If it couldn't get any of these uh, conditions, it'll go to the final else statement and get a random response. And that gets us to our third function, get random response. Here you can see we're setting the number of responses to, to four. We're going to get a random number, which is essentially a number, a decimal number or a float number that's a number from zero to one, a random number, which is this obscene number here. And then we're going to multiply that times the number of responses. And that should give us a random number, 0 through 3. And it gave us random response number 2. And we'll enter this if statement. Is which response 0? No. Is which response 1? No. Is which response 2? Yes. So it'll set the response. Do you really think so? And return the response back to get response. Get response returns that response back to the main program and prints it out. Do you really think so? And we'll exit out of the program by saying bye. We trace through. Equals bye. Exits out. And we're done. Okay. So we kind of went through how Magpie 2 works. I'm going to step through the first activity with you to kind of give you a feel of what's going of how to approach these uh, exercises so the first exercise is have it respond to have it respond with this string tell me more about your pets you can see in the other one we said tell me more about your family it says tell me more about your pets if the person entered in dog or cat for example if somebody entered in I like my cat mittens I want the program to respond tell me more about your pets all right so we noticed that the workhorse is back here in Magpie 2 and that this function get response really finds the keywords using the using the function index of so if I wanted to respond for the keyword cat and dog I'm just probably gonna reuse this logic it's already here let's let's reuse it so here I can see in my little hints here I tell for exercise one I say respond about pets so I'm going to put my new logic, I'm going to add my new logic to this section right here. 
So I'm just copying and pasting the previous one. So the previous one looked for mother, father, sister, and brother. Instead of that, I'm going to, instead of looking for those, I'm going to look for cat or dog. Whoop, dog. And I'm going to respond with, tell, instead of tell me more about your family, I'm going to say, tell me more about your pets. Okay. I'm going to save this and compile it. Looks like everything's compiling. Clear. Everything looks good. I'm going to clear everything out. And let's try it again. And I'm going to test it this time. So here I am. I'm going to hop back over to Magpie Runner 2. And hopefully it'll give us what we want. Here we are at the start. We get the greeting. Hello, let's talk. Print that out. Now we're going to read in the next line. I like my cat mittens. I like my cat mittens. I hope if the, my program works, I'm going to get the response, tell me more about your pets. So let's trace through and see if that's what's going to happen. Oops, sorry. I didn't enter. All right. So we go to get response. Now we're going to trace through and hopefully it'll... Is the word no in that statement? Nope. It'll skip over to mother, father, sister, brother. Nope. Now it'll go to this thing, cat or dog. Is cat or dog in there? Oh, cat's in there. So hopefully it'll hit this. And sure enough, it does. It grabs it, returns the response, and prints out, tell me more about your pets. All right. That's pretty much the first activity in Magpie 2. Try and execute the same type of steps for the next for the next uh, parts of the exercise.